Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework, and today we are building the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder. And uh, this one is particularly close to my heart because I didn't actually have to cut out all the plate steel by hand using an angle grinder and a cutoff wheel. Uh, we are now selling laser cut parts, and uh, I decided, well, you know what? I want to build one, I want to film it, I want to do this whole thing. So I, I took uh, an entire week and I uh, assembled this thing, cut all the parts out and everything else. Uh, and put it together uh, over the course of the last week. And this is actually going to a friend of mine. He's a knife maker. He's a prolific knife maker. Um, and I really truly believe in his work. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna build one and send it to him. Basically how this works is uh, every single thing in this, in this build is put down into this video so that you can follow it along. I'm breaking it down into sections so that you can fully understand what it takes to put something like this together. When you buy the laser cut parts and plans and if you buy the ultimate bundle, I'll uh, create links down below so that you can find all those parts and pieces and plans. Uh, you can actually assemble something just like this for relatively inexpensive. Uh, we uh, have done a, a bunch of uh, product testing on it to try to kind of figure out, okay, like if you build one, you buy it from us and buy all the parts and pieces, uh, what does it cost? You know, wheels all the way down to the motor and the VFD. There's a lot of options out there on how you can actually get this thing built. In my opinion, uh, for what you pay to build this thing, yes, you got to put a little work into it and you got to, you know, obviously build it yourself, but uh, you can save thousands of dollars by building the Revolution and you get all the features and functionality of a really good high quality manufactured grinder, which that was my ultimate goal when I started. I, I wanted to become a bladesmith and start metalworking and doing all these things. and. I just simply could not afford to pay three, four thousand dollars for a decent grinder. So I actually went and designed one, built one, and prototyped it. This video is really put together so if you have bought it or you're thinking about buying it, you can follow along and see how it's done and built. So without further ado, screw it. Let's do it. Okay, so let's go over what you're going to need to get this build done. What you're seeing right here is the contents of the ultimate bundle pack. This is the laser cut steel, laser cut in Dallas, Texas, and it is precision and it works really well. It's three eighths inch thick steel, all of it. And then 62 pieces of hardware that are high quality. It's every nut, bolt, washer, spacer that you need to assemble this thing. So this is what you're gonna need to acquire on your own. This is the tube steel for the frame. It's two inch by two inch, quarter inch wall. These are the tooling arms and the tracking arm, and these are one and a half inch by one and a half inch quarter inch wall. This is a four inch piece of one inch round. You're gonna need some angle iron and a piece of high carbon steel for the, the platen face. You're gonna need a wheel set, a motor, a VFD. Now, there's two different methodologies for these VFDs. You don't need two of them, you just need one. And this particular one is a lot cheaper than this one. Uh, of course, that comes with some caveats. You can go for a more budget build by using this. This is under $100, and it does exactly what this device does, which is about $350 to $400. The difference is, of course, in quality. You get what you pay for. And this one, you would have to keep dust-free and very cool. So that's just something to consider. The motor is going to run you about $165. This is a three-phase motor, and I know a lot of people say, I don't have three-phase in my home workshop or my, my building, and uh, how can I get around that? Well, that's what the VFD is for. The VFD takes single-phase electricity and converts it to three-phase. That's what gives this the ability for this to become a variable-speed motor. It's a very simple process, and we'll get into it later in the build. To give you an idea of what you're looking at as far as cost goes on the steel, uh, I have about $50 in on all the tube steel and the one inch angle iron. The wheel set is gonna run you about 120 bucks for these three wheels. And whatever size drive wheel you go with, my recommendation is a seven inch drive wheel. Those can be had for about $80. I know it seems like a lot to remember, but don't worry. When you buy the ultimate pack, you will get a plan set that will have a link to a resources page to help you locate all of this equipment. Now, the first step to starting this grinder is to cut down all of your steel to length. And in the plan set, there are detailed 
lengths that each one of these pieces uh, represents and needs to be cut down to. And you'll notice the surface of the steel doesn't have a lot of mill scale on it. And that's because we do a soak in vinegar, just standard household vinegar. And these pieces sit in overnight, sometimes 48 hours. And what that does is it removes the mill scale from the surface of the steel. That is an important step for a couple of reasons. One is this piece of steel needs to slide into this cavity. And in order to do that, it is uh, quite precise. And in, with the mill scale left on both of these pieces on the inside and the outside of this piece, they will not uh, uh, telescope. That is a super important step. So uh, people that skip that often become confused and wonder why it doesn't work. Well, if you've ever tried to grind mill scale off of a surface like this, uh, you will know that that is a lesson in futility and that uh, soaking in vinegar is quite simple, easy, non-toxic, and very effective. So the next step is we're gonna take our two nine inch pieces of two by two tube steel, take them over to the drill press or a mill, and we are going to drill our holes for the axles and round over the corners so the grinder head can turn 90 degrees. We're gonna grab one of our laser cut hinges. I like to use the one with the C channels for this so we can mark out where we need to drill our hole. And uh, how this is gonna sit is just like this on this pillar. Actually, let me turn this around so it's sitting properly. Like this, it's gonna sit. So when the grinder is finished, you want this piece to line up with the outside edge of this pillar so that it's 90 degrees here and then 90 degrees here. So once, once this is sitting straight, you know that you've got a good tight fit. Quickest and easiest way to figure out where to drill this hole is to basically lay this C-channel right on the pipe and mark your hole. Line up the top just like this, nice and flat, and then when you know that when this is this way, take another one here, line it up this way, you've got a 90 degree angle. And that's sitting flat up against the outside of that, of that pipe. Nice and lined up. Mark our hole. And double check. It's on this side. Push this up against it. It's close. Might have to move it over just a little bit. And if it's not perfect, that's not a big deal. You can always adjust this after it's built. I like to drill a quarter inch pilot hole before I drill my actual three quarter inch. So uh, that keeps my, my alignment quite right. Got our pilot hole drilled, quarter inch. We're gonna drill our three quarter. And again, we're gonna go all the way through. A little bit of tap magic. All right. Whole process took about five minutes. The first one's the hardest one because you can, you can use this one as your guide for the next one. So now I'm gonna use this guy as my guide. I'm gonna use a couple of the hinges to line everything up in the vise. Again, you can do this however you want. This is how I choose to do it. The, the hinges actually act as a way to keep these aligned up here. So once you start clamping everything together, it becomes a little bit easier. And then you can line everything up on the side and lock it all down. And again, you're just doing this to sort of 
make sure that these line these are lined up. So it acts as a guide and make sure everything is locked down. And we're just gonna make a divot in that bottom one. it out and you can see here we've now got our spot where we're going to drill screw it let's do it We can actually check and make sure everything lines up by taking the bolt that comes in the hardware kit and sliding it through the axle and then sliding it through here in the direction it's going to go and then we can see did it line up and in this case it's pretty dang near perfect there's very little play up there maybe just a little smidge of steel showing no big deal there and then also on this side, we'll be able to lay it flat and check for clearances here. And we've got a little bit on this side too, not a big deal. Uh, it's, it's close enough for my taste and we can align it all up once it's, uh, it's assembled. So that's how that works. The, the other way of doing this too is we now need to shave off some of this, this steel on this corner. So I like to just take this and set it up just like this. Grab a Sharpie marker and draw a series of lines as I'm turning this thing so I know what does it look like when I turn this thing and how far down do I have to go. Once that's done, pull this out and I've got my radius, which is surprisingly smaller than most people think. You really just need to remove up to that black line all the way from there to there and we'll do that with a with a grinder you can do it with an angle grinder i have a 2 by 72 so i'm just going to go ahead and take that and grind that right off but uh yeah that's the easiest way of doing it and you can do it with an angle grinder i've done that before easy cheesy one other thing you can do while you've got this all together like this is mark where you're going to drill and tap your hole for the locking mechanism for the entire grill grinder head and i like to just put a speck right there something like that and then check it on this angle to make sure that spacing works out it might need to go over a little bit this way Do it like that, it should give me enough clearance. Well, maybe somewhere right in between those two, anyhow. Like so. And now we've got our hole marked for where the locking nut needs to go, the locking uh, socket head screw needs to go. Uh, this is going to be a 3 8 inch 16, so we are going to drill it out five sixteenths and tap it. Okay, you can see we've got uh, both pillars drilled through. And I'm just gonna use, again, just use something flat to just double, triple check that when this thing sits flat, it is gonna line up with the plate, and it does. These look pretty good. Um, you know, they're, not, again, not 100% perfect. There's slight deviations and things, but nothing that will affect the use of the grinder itself. Uh, if you get it close, you're, you're on the money. It, this thing is uh, pretty forgiving when it comes to that kind of thing, so. All right, now we just gotta grind uh, the, the turns here. I'm gonna mark the turns on this side as well, like I did with the other one. And we'll take that uh, little bit of metal off of that corner and we'll keep on trucking.
Okay, so we got the, the pillars drilled out and rounded over here. And one of the things I like to do is to check to ensure that you have enough clearance. You thread your bolt in and you turn it around and you work the, the hinge around and you should see a little bit of steel right there between the pillar and the hinge. And you should see that all the way down on the rotation. So it should give it enough clearance. That's all we're looking for is just enough clearance. Turning it that way. So that one looks good. So now at this point, we're gonna get prepared to uh, put all this together and get it set and ready for welding. So I've got my, my four spacers here from my hardware kit. I've got some, some nuts here and my all thread. And we're going to just put this together in a way that gets us prepped for welding. A nut on this end. And then we're gonna start at the front. So this is our, our first hinge with the C-channel, it goes all the way through, right? And then we're gonna put our spacer on, and then our first pillar. Okay, you can see that, right? And put another spacer on, and another hinge. And then we're going to thread up a nut and what that does is it keeps this all in place. Put it real tight, we're just going to get everything lined up. We need another nut. Another hinge. Another spacer. Another pillar. Another spacer, another hinge, and a last nut. Now you'll have to adjust the width here to match up what your width is going to be on the actual grinder. So I like to go take a look at the plans and figure that whole thing out, get this all nice and set and ready to go. But for this training purpose, I'm just gonna eyeball it. All right, looks good. Okay, so now we need to take out this weld seam down inside of the, the receiver tubes. These are the nine inch receiver tubes that we cut earlier. And there is this pesky little weld seam in there. Easiest way to do that is to use a pneumatic file or a mechanical file. Can do it by hand. Also, uh, Fireball Tools made a, uh, a weld seam removal tool that works just fine. Or if you're really ambitious, you can use a file and, and file it out. I typically use a combination of a pneumatic file or, or a mechanical file and a hand file to get rid of this. All right, let's do it. And what I like to do is use one of the tooling arms and double check that it'll slide all the way through. And it does. And then pull it out and turn it 90 degrees and do the same thing. Uh, a lot of times these tubes aren't quite true. So you want to just make sure because you will be turning uh, the tooling arm uh, sometimes and you want to make sure it goes in and out. Now, if you don't soak these in vinegar, you need to grind off the mill scale. Uh, if you don't do that, uh, the, even the inside of this tube here has mill scale on it, and these will not fit together regardless of removing the weld seam. Okay, so now let's take a look at the receiver tubes. We've got the weld filed out from inside. What I like to do before I go ahead and tack these together is just double check, make sure everything is flush, and then also grab my tooling arm and double, triple check on each one of these that I can uh, nest this inside. 
in more than one direction. So turn, turning it 90 and pulling it out, turning it 90, pulling it out, just to make sure it doesn't slide all the way through. And I do that on both receiver tubes, just to make sure. It's, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to do this after the fact. So everything is looking pretty good. This one's a little tight in this direction, but it might be because there's just some dust in there. I just like the fact that I can, I can slide it all the way through and it feels pretty tight. Uh, that's, that's what I'm looking for. So now that we know that, we're going to take both of these pieces, line them up how we want them, and just kind of take a gander at them, make sure they look good, and I'm going to pop a small hole here. This is going to be a 3 8 16th hole that's going to go, uh, or actually a 3 8 16th tapped hole. So we're going to drill it out to 5 16 of an inch. And what this is going to do is it's going to create the locking hole, the mechanism where the knob goes, to lock the tooling arm in place. So if you can see how this is starting to come together, this is the tooling arm for the platen. It's gonna sit like this, and you need a way for this to uh, be locked in place. And how we do that is an inch, inch and a half back from the front, we're gonna drill a 5 16 inch hole all the way through just the top side, and then we're gonna thread it 3 8 16. Okay, so now in preparation for welding, we are going to uh, clamp these all together. I have a couple of can't twist clamps here. These are, these are pretty amazing. Uh, if you don't have any of these, you can use C-clamps. Uh, I've got a big C-clamp here. We're gonna use that as well. Uh, a couple of things you really wanna keep in mind while doing this is that you want these to be you know, flat, as flat as they can get. So whatever you decide to do, however you decide to clamp this, make sure that you've got everything lined up the way you want it. Um, and you know everything is flush on both sides that way uh, when you when you go to use the machine if these are not true to each other you'll notice that with the tracking so that's kind of important so I've got it laid on a flat surface and I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this here to uh, ensure that it stays together this way right and I'm just I didn't tighten this real tight I'm just getting it kind of uh, loosely fit together here. Okay, and I'm just ensuring that it's all nice and flat and tight and flush. Uh, looks good that way. And then I'm gonna hold it together this way, yet again with this big old C-clamp. Let's do it kind of loose. Doesn't have to be super tight just yet. And then ensuring that this stays together down here. Put one more clamp here. At this point, I'm, I'm fairly certain that this is all flush and straight and true, but I'm gonna just use like a straight edge and just double check it. And yeah. Yeah, that's good. Looks nice. Also, uh, I mentioned this earlier, but I like to make sure that my weld seams are aligned together. So wherever I ground the weld seam out, I wanna put those aligned the same way, and my preference is just on the bottom. So this is where the weld seam is on this one, and this is where the weld seam is on this one. Everything's locked down, so I can pop a couple of welds on both sides. I like to do three on each side, and that's been strong enough. All right, now that I got three tacks on each side, I'm gonna go ahead and put about an inch weld on each, over each one of the three tacks on each side and we'll call it done. Thank you. 
And now you can see we've got a, a really nice uh, body for our well, our uh, grinder here. Uh, it's uh, these welds are done. You don't need to run a whole bead. I've seen people do that. It's really not necessary. You follow what I've done here, inch, inch, and inch on both sides. Uh, this is plenty, plenty strong. Um, I am just a little bit off on my measurement here. I've got a little bit overhang on this side, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that down with the grinder. Other than that, the body of, the, of this is done. Now in the drawings, there is a hole over here and a threaded tapped hole over here to hold the tool rest in. And we don't put that hole in until the, the end. You can, you can do it now and line everything all up and try to line it up with the motor plate. But uh, for the most part, um, I just do that after the fact. So now we're gonna mount the motor plate onto the receiver tubes. In the past, I actually did this later after mounting the receiver tubes to the hinges. And uh, uh, somebody, a very uh, smart person said, you know, you could probably save yourself a whole bunch of headache if you did that step and it's sort of in reverse where you know, you've got your receiver tubes together, then you take your motor plate, put it on top, clamp it down, and actually weld it up there. And he's, he's very right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this from now on. Uh, the, the simple, uh, this is very simple when it's, when it's not all together and, it doesn't, and it's not all welded uh, with the hinges and everything. Basically what you're trying to do is you just need to line everything all up. It's, it's, it's literally that simple. Uh, line it up. There's this this plate should line up with the the lines that are on the receiver tubes And it should be flush in the the front You're gonna want to make sure that You've got your hole in the right spot So because this is the the hole that holds the platen arm in it needs to be in this position in this configuration Once you uh, have that all together, it's essential that you just line everything up make sure it's flush and we're gonna pop a couple tacks in it and uh, make sure it's straight. But yeah, a couple of cant twist clamps really help here uh, to keep things tight. Yeah, all of that looks pretty good. And um, for cleanliness, I've installed some of these uh, plug weld holes. And the reason why I like using these is, is you get a lot of the pressure from the motor, the vibration from the motor is distributed evenly amongst the uh, receiver tubes. And uh, I've stopped adding the welds uh, to the top because I think it's ugly. So I just do the plug welds, I do one back here, and then I do a few welds along the bottom that you won't see. My first tack is just gonna be right here on the bottom. I'm just gonna do a quick tack there, hold it in place. And then the polar opposite, I'm gonna fill in a little bit of this plug. On the back side here, pop a tack right in between. Okay, so now that's all welded together, we're gonna set this aside to cool. And we're gonna take a, another quick look at this setup here. This is the, the, the risers, the pillars that go uh, to the base plate. And then these are the hinges. And you can see I've got my spacers in between each pillar and each hinge. And then I've got two nuts in the middle and two on the outside. And what I've done is I've essentially allowed myself to kind of line all this up so that I don't have to worry so much about trying to keep everything in place with magnets. The quickest and easiest way to tell if you've got this aligned properly is to measure between the two hinges in the middle. 
and it should be somewhere around two and a half inches. Once you've got that, you now know that this setup is correct. Now, uh, for me, I like to line it up the way it's gonna be built on the grinder with the C-channel in the front, even put the locking mechanism inside of there so I know, and I know that this is lined up. I take this, grab the base plate, set it down on the table. I'll measure it, should be about 10 by 10, and it is. And I'll grab my uh, a marker here, and I'll measure five inches over so I can get a center line. Okay. There's that is uh, divided in half. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing here. Line it up, you know, that's five inch center. see okay we've got exact dead center of our plate we now know that and we're gonna take our our situation here and we know between these two is 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 a uh, is two and a half inches between these two pillars here is about three and three-eighths something like that so so two and a half plus three quarters is three and a quarter, right? So if we take three and a quarter and we divide it in half, yep, that's correct. 3.25 divided in half is one and a half, one and five eighths, right? Somewhere around there. One and five eighths. That should give us three and a quarter, and it does. So we now know that when we set this on here, all we gotta do is line it up with those marks. And again, that's approximate because you've got those spacers in there. So you're gonna have a little bit of juice in there, a little bit of line uh, wiggle in there. Again, not super precise work here that we're doing. We are just wanting to ensure that we're close to center. And you can also take your ruler and check it here. So this is three and seven eighths on this side, three and seven eighths on that side, three and seven eighths on this side, three and seven eighths on this side. That is uh, as about close to dead center as I can get it. And I know that now I'm ready to uh, mark where, where this should go. I'm just gonna take a, my marker and mark a couple of spots here. Because we're not going to weld this down just yet, but we're going to use that as our template when we get ready to weld that down to the base plate. All right, so this is uh, cool enough to touch at this point. So we're going to get ready to line up everything to weld up these, uh, this hinge system here and how I like to do this is weld it on its side first few tacks anyhow you get everything turn it on 90 and you can see you have a hard time keeping this all level so I like to grab a, a scrap piece of 2x2 two two and lay it underneath these just to hold it up and just so happens you have that scrap piece because this is the tensioning pillar. So you take that, set it up underneath, I'll kind of support it. The one downside to welding this all together uh, is if you don't clean up your plug hole welds, it's a little bit wobbly. So that's just something to consider when you do this. I like to make sure my nuts are somewhat finger tight here. And I'm also going to use the base plate and a couple of magnets to create a situation where I can line up everything to the top. Uh, take my base plate, a couple of magnets. 
that positioned properly. And then I use a piece of aluminum, a little shim. Put this down in here. And what that does is it makes a perfect alignment for the top of all of my hinges. And it takes all of the guesswork out of trying to figure out is my are my hinges aligned uh, once i i know this i have this set up i can very easily tell by just pushing everything up against this and now that i can see that it's all aligned and it's all set up right i'm going to pop some tacks in a couple of strategic spots just to hold it all together. Those two bottom tacks are kind of holding it all together and in place. I can now remove this situation. And I, I can make sure by turning these that I've got enough clearance on my pillars and I do. So now I'm just gonna place tacks along the top of these four hinges. Okay, at this point we can set our entire grinder up on the base plate and our work is easy because we already marked everything all out. Line it up. And I'm going to pop four tacks in each pillar, one at each corner. What I think I really love about this build is that when you get the pre-cut pieces from us, how quickly it goes together. It just really simply does. And it's just, even with the all thread in there, it's just balanced and it, it just works. I love that. Solid. So one of the things I like to do at this stage is double check that the whole head itself will turn and what the degree of the angle is. So in this particular case, um, this I'm using a digital level here. It's, uh, it's pretty accurate. So let's go ahead and turn it and find out where we're at. 89.53, I can totally live with that. Uh, doesn't bother me at all. I think it's it's perfect. Right out of the gate, welds are still hot. So now we've checked our angles, everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my welds. Uh, I always weld on the outside of the hinges and not on the inside. If you weld on the inside, there's a possibility that your weld might interfere with the turn. So. Uh, no need to weld inside, just go ahead and pop your welds on the outside. This is what it looks like so far. It's coming together. I just uh, threw the tooling arm in there just to double check everything still looks good, even when it's warm, still sliding in and out really nicely. 
And the next thing we need to focus on is uh, getting this uh, tracking pillar, the tracking pillar up on the top here. We need to cut this out and fabricate it. So let's get started. This is uh, pretty easy to fabricate. There's a couple of things I like to do right off the bat, and that's mark which side I'm gonna uh, drill my hole, number one, because there, there's gonna be a hole that goes through this for, for, the, uh, for the fulcrum bolt, and that's a 3 8 of an inch hole. But there's also a, 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 an angle here, and there's a couple ways to figure it out. And the easiest way that I can explain this is, is that it's, it's 60 degrees off the plate, but it, it looks more like a 30 degree cut. So uh, it can be either or. It just, uh, just depends on how you, you're looking at it using your protractor. So the kind of the simplest way to do this is to take your ruler, go all the way to the outside at to six and seven eighths, and make a mark. And what that does is this mark right here. So that's six and seven eighths from the mark to the end over here. And now if you take this and you angle it up to the corner, the outside corner, which is here, all the way to your mark, that is gonna give you approximately the right angle and again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, this is just my preference. If it's close to this, it will work. And then the other thing we need to do is mark our hole. So for our fulcrum bolt, and this is about uh, three quarters of an inch down on center for right in the middle there, let's see. So that's where we're gonna drill our hole. The first thing we actually want to do is drill that hole. So uh, if, if you wait to do this, it will not work. You have to do it first before you notch out for the, the tracking arm that comes off, the tensioning and tracking arm that comes out of there. We're gonna put some notches in this to allow for clearance and travel on there, but this hole needs to be perfect. It needs to be all the way across at 90 degrees offset so that when that bolt goes through and it holds that tensioning pillar, that everything is sitting straight. If you cut these notches, what's gonna happen is, is this is gonna bow out and you're not gonna be able to drill that hole straight through. So make sure you follow those steps uh, the right way. Uh, once we have this notch cut out, the hole drilled, then we'll go ahead and cut our notches for our tracking pillar, our tracking tensioning arm, whatever. Now your instinct here is gonna say to go ahead and pull this out of the vise, flip it around, drill the other side. Don't do that, drill straight through. That way you know you have a perfect 90 degree angle here. Okay, so now that we've got our hole drilled all the way through, we're gonna go ahead and set our miter to uh, 30 degrees and you'll see how simple this is. Uh, angles don't have to be tough. You know, it, it, once it starts to come to you, you know, you'll really understand. So miter at, at 30 degrees. Also, you'll see that it, it says 60 degrees in there as well. It just really depends on where you've marked your, where you've found the line. So uh, it could be 30, could be 60. Anyhow. Uh, that's the easiest way to do it and make that cut. If not, you can do this by hand and then just make sure that you, uh, you know, straighten your line out. But uh, for me, I like doing it this way because it just makes a lot of sense. Um, also, I clamp this down so I know that nothing is going to move. Remember when I said angles are hard? Apparently my math was just slightly off. And uh, that made for about an eighth of an inch in difference in my line. But it doesn't bother me because it's gonna work anyway. Okay, so we got our tensioning pillar all notched out down here. 
I'm happy with it, even though the line was off a little bit. Uh, this is the correct measurement, six and seven eighths from here to here. So about, again, this is a, a, a lot of people are watching my videos or are buying my plans and they're saying, hey, this, you know, this measurement, I, I cut this wrong, I did this wrong, is, will it still work, and so on and so on. And a lot of these things that I've come up with, that, you know, part of the prototyping process is just kind of throwing stuff out there and seeing if it works. And uh, th these grinders are very forgivable when you start to assemble them. As long as your angles are pretty decent, uh, you can, there's a lot of room for variance, so don't worry about it too much. All right, so... Now that we've got those two things done, we're gonna make our, our notches uh, for the, the, the pillar, the, um, the, I mean, I'm sorry, the tracking uh, tensioning arm. And how I do this is I wanna go right smack dab down the middle and I wanna leave three quarters of an inch. So if I mark it here at one inch and I go three eighths inch over and three eighths of an inch over, I know I will have three quarters of an inch left over. And then I'm just going to simply mark a line. Now remember, this is the front and it's, it needs a little bit more room on this side. So we're gonna mark down our measurement per the plans, which is about two and a half inches. And again, this is not set in stone. So just remember that breathe easy on that and then this other side doesn't need to be quite as deep on this side we can go down about an inch and a half maybe a little more an inch and five eighths again nothing set in stone here All right. now you can see where we're headed with this right we're making our spots for our notches here What that does is it gives, when our arm is sitting in there, it gives room for this arm to play, to have some play. Those notches weren't there or you just cut it straight across, you, you wouldn't be able to get that tension correct. So that's the reason why those are there. All right, let's cut it out on the bandsaw. So I took another look at the plans and this is actually two and a quarter. This is one and a half, so just, uh, I want to keep everybody in the know on this, but uh, yeah, two and a quarter and one and a half. So I removed a quarter of an inch. We're going to use this mark. I got my miters set to zero. And I'm going to clamp everything down like we did before. We're going to cut our these two lines first, and then we're going to dig down and cut those. And again, clamping everything down just really seems to help just to keep your line straight. Okay, so we've got our horizontals here. Those are cut out. Something to think about when you cut this, you're gonna cut these lines down. You're gonna cut all the way through both sides. Uh, this is gonna warp out. It's gonna to wanna to flare out a little bit. Totally normal and correctable using a C-clamp. Uh, someone had mentioned that the possibility of putting a through bolt here to uh, try to keep these together while you cut it. Uh, that's a good idea. I just don't know how it would work because you can't really set it down on the table at that point. So I just leave it like this. And then at the end, uh, once it's all flared out and everything, I take a C-clamp and I bend it back into shape. You can see the flare there, not a big deal. Let's take a C-clamp. I like to do this while it's still warm. I'm being cut. Crank down on it. Push it a little past where it needs to be. And 
and then loosen it up. And a little bit more cleanup, but there it is. All right, so there's a finished tracking pillar and yeah, ready to go up. Um, one thing also I want to mention is that notice the weld seam and where it is. Uh, I prefer it on the back or the front, not up one of these sides where you're going to be drilling your hole. I think that's pretty obvious, but it's something I've done in the past where I actually didn't do it that way. And then I had a weld seam here and then I had to grind the weld seam out to make the, uh, so that the, the tensioning arm can, the tracking arm can fit in there. Uh, just something to think about. But yeah, that's it. And now we're ready to weld it up. Also, you're gonna wanna hang on to the piece that you cut off uh, from the, the backside here, uh, the one and a half inch piece, because we're gonna use that as our spring holder for the bottom of the, the tensioning arm. We're gonna grind this down and cut it down a little bit to make it match the angle. But yeah, that's what's gonna hold the spring. So hang on to that. All right, so let's take a look at this piece since we all have it, uh, we're talking about it anyway, might as well. So if you can imagine, you want this sitting uh, pretty level. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it, it needs to sit pretty level with the, the top plate. So if you can imagine, this is the, the very top of the, uh, the grinder there, the receiver tube. You want this to sit that way. And the easiest way I can tell you how to do this is you essentially need to cut this exact same angle, 30 degrees right here. So we'll just clamp this into our, uh, our miter and we'll be able to uh, go ahead and shave off about 30 degrees off of that. And then it should sit nice and flush. We gotta do a little bit of grinding and whatnot just to kind of round over some of this, but uh, yeah, should work out pretty good. So the piece is so small, it won't fit in here. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a piece of scrap tubing. This is from the treadmill I chopped up initially when I made my first grinder. So I'm just gonna line it all up and clamp it down. All right, now this needs a hole in it. You just need about a eighth inch hole right here in the center. The spring is gonna go in there, so we're gonna just put it right like that. You can see what I did here. A couple of magnets just to hold everything down. Even use a, a little tiny refrigerator magnet just to kind of keep that from twisting a little bit. And uh, now we'll tack it into place. All right, so now we're gonna set our tracking pillar, tensioning pillar up on the grinder itself. Just using a big magnet on this side to hold it in place. Um, for the most part, it should keep it quite steady uh, when you're tacking it in place. You're really gonna wanna pay attention though, you know, where it sits on this arm because this is where you really need to pay attention um, is you wanna make sure you've got it set perfect on this this angle here and the only way i know how to do that is with a digital level and we can take this turn it on and do a couple of things here we're going to check it this way we're going to set it on here zero it out and we're going to tap it up here and I can see that it's it's quite a bit off. It's like a degree and a half off. And it's tilting 
this way. So really got some adjustments to make here so that I can make this right. Whether or not you decide to shim this thing or, or whatever it is, you really got to get this, th these angles the same. So if this, this has got to be at zero and this has got, if this is at zero, this has got to be at zero. So you really need to play around with it to get that right. If you don't, you're going to have trouble tr getting this thing to track. So um, the other option is, is to tack it on one side and then kind of bang it into place. But kind of playing Russian roulette when you do it that way, it's just easier to get your magnets kind of all set up and working and functional that way. Um, when you go to tack it, it's, it's just in place and it's just kind of a done deal and you don't have to think about it afterwards. Uh, right now we're at 0.43. So if I put this down here, we're at 0 0.03, which is pretty much at zero. So the key is, is that this should be close, as close to zero as possible. Now it's at 0.15. I'm gonna say that's pretty good. I'm, I've done this a few times and it doesn't get much better than that. So if I pop a tack right here, it's gonna pull this over just slightly. So we'll do that and hope it comes to zero. Didn't do us much, but that's all right. Good enough for government work. All right, so this is the tracking arm here, and uh, it's a piece of one and a half inch tube. It's a quarter inch wall, and uh, we're going to use this to uh, uh, make our tracking pillar work. So. Um, uh, in, the, in the plan set, there's there's a few holes that need to be drilled in this thing. And let me zoom out here so you can see this thing a little bit better. Um, and there's a there's a weld seam in here, so that's something you want to try to avoid. I usually uh, put the weld seam on the bottom, so this right here would be considered the top. Okay, and we're going to measure back uh, an inch and a half. About right there. And I'm going to do it again on this side, inch and a half. And somewhere right in the middle, we're going to want to put a through hole. And it's going to be a threaded through hole, okay? And this is going to be for, so that's pretty close actually, it's right dead on. This is going to be for the knob that turns the tracking mechanism in and out. So if you can imagine this is the front of the grinder, there's going to be a knob that goes through this side, a whole uh, threaded uh, knob, and it's going to turn the tracking mechanism up and down on this side. There's also a hole or a set of holes that need to happen up here to mount your tracking mechanism. So what happens is, is if you if you line all this up and your holes are exact, you got to make sure that the bolt is not too long that goes through. Otherwise, it's going to hit this threaded rod that goes through. There's also a a hole that's three inches from the back and about a half inch up from the bottom of the tube itself. I'll zoom in on that so you can see. So one half inch up from the bottom, approximately, about right there. We're gonna drill a hole all the way through. It's gonna be three eighths of an inch, and it's gonna go all the way through, and it's non-threaded. And what this is for is the fulcrum bolt that goes through the tracking pillar, tensioning pillar. So this is how it's gonna sit up in there. And that through bolt, I'm gonna go through there, non-threaded, 3 8 inch through bolt. And then the tracking mechanism is gonna sit on top. The knob is gonna go here to thread through. Pretty easy. 
Also, there is one hole back here, the very back and on the bottom. Uh, same, same, you know, you can use a 3 8 or a 3 16 or a uh, 1 8 inch hole, and that's going to be where the other end of the spring is going to go. So you need to drill that hole as well. Not too complicated. All right, so let's drill that first hole in the bottom for the spring. All right, we're gonna turn it on its side and we're gonna drill the hole all the way through for the fulcrum bolt. This is going to be three eighths of an inch, exactly three eighths of an inch. And we're gonna drill all the way through in one fluid motion. And then we need this hole here, which is gonna be a 5 16 of an inch hole because it's gonna get threaded. I like to do this little trick with my, uh, my center punch, just a cheap Harbor Freight center punch. But it's got spring loaded in here so you can use it as a, as a tap follower. Works pretty good. Keeps your tap straight. And this one is gonna go all the way through in one motion. This is just a standard tap. There's nothing special about it, but we are gonna go all the way through so that when the, the knob gets threaded, it will allow it, the, the threads will go all the way through to the other side. So I'm just gonna tap it through like this, and it's now going through the other side. There we go. And you gotta pull it out of the vise because it's gonna get hung up underneath, but you can see I'm going all the way through. All right, so in the hardware kit, if you buy the hardware kit from me, you get the proper bolt uh, to, to put this together, and it's a 3 8 inch uh, 16 bolt, and it just goes all the way through, and uh, should be a nice tight fit. That's, that's kind of what you want. You, you don't want any play really in this bolt because this is what's controlling. If it, if it wobbles this way, you're in trouble. You don't want that. You throw a lock washer on there. Uh, there's another washer in the kit that you can use to thread that on. And then you get a legit tracking mechanism knob. And you can see how this all comes together and why that's important that it threads all the way through, which again is the reason why you use quarter inch tube is because you're putting threads inside of this tube. And uh, if you use a thinner wall tube, you're gonna have trouble getting, well, you won't be able to get threads in there. So that's the point of that. All right, so now we've got, you can see, goes all the way through. And that would be able to touch your, your tracking mechanism knob there and adjust it you, you know, using this right here. So that's, that's the point of that. So since we're here, we're gonna talk about the tracking mechanism. You got a couple of choices. You got uh, this guy here, which is a prefabbed uh, tracking mechanism. You can buy it on eBay. Uh, from Origin Blade Maker. It's kind of my preferred. I, I really like this. Um, in the plan set, I did recommend to drill a hole right here through the middle just to make it a little bit more, uh, more of the floating portion of it. It would, it would allow for the turn a little bit better. Uh, what I've discovered is, is that's not necessary. Uh, okay, so you can use these two slots. And in fact, it's kind of preferred because the way they have this set up is that those two bolts will go down and around 
this 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 uh, tracking uh, knob, this adjuster knob. And if you don't have, if you have this bolt here, you can you can do it. Uh, it, it you just need a shorter bolt, and that that works fine too. And that allows for the the travel. But what I've noticed is you need such little adjustment this way to make this function to actually allow it to track and forward and re reverse because that's the whole point of this being able to do this and this is you really it's such a minute adjustment you don't need to bother with this center bolt if you put two quarter 20 bolts in those slots and thread them into the top of this tracking pillar you've got exactly what you need is perfect you can go that route this is uh, i think 60 or 70 bucks shipped to your house or you can go the route of the homemade job like I did here. I have another video on that. I'll put a card up there so you can watch how this is built. Uh, a rudimentary drawing of this is included in the plan set now. Uh, and this works great too. It's the same concept. You can uh, literally mount it right here above the tracking mechanism. Use the same size bolt. It goes down through the top and uh, it allows for, um, it, it does the exact same thing. It's just uglier in my opinion but you do get the bolt that fits in here and all the spacers and everything in the hardware pack. So it's uh, kind of a toss up, you know, you can pick and choose how you wanna uh, do the, your tracking. Um, both ways are adequate. This is a little bit more of an elegant solution, what OBM makes. And I think for that 60 or 70 bucks, you do get the wheel. So it does uh, kind of work out. But if you make your own, you can, buy the wheel set from Chaz over at knifegrinderparts.com and he includes a four inch tracking wheel, which works really well as, also. So uh, for this build, I'm gonna go ahead and use my homemade tracking because uh, it's just something I made and I like it and it works, but uh, you can pick and choose how you wanna do your own tracking. All right, so just to go over this again, you've got a three eighths inch hole Three, eight, three inches from the back, it's about a half inch. The center of this hole is about a half inch from the bottom of this, this piece of steel. You've got a through hole here, this is three eighths inch, inch 16, and it's threaded all the way through, centered on the middle of this piece of steel, about an inch and a half back, and then just on top of that, you've got a hole. And my hole works out to be a little off center, a lot off center, because the tracking mechanism is gonna get mounted on this. So we're gonna go ahead and thread this up. I'm not gonna tighten it too much because we will not be right on. But you can see if you if you use the wrong size bolt, it would hit the, the tracking knob here. Go ahead and thread this up. You can see it's going all the way through and it's pushing up against this. And as you turn it in, it pushes it further out. Turn it back this way. It allows it to, to travel closer to the steel. All right, you got all that. And then we just gotta mount the fulcrum bolt. want this to be a little bit snug nothing you want it to be able to travel basically so you just want a little bit a little bit of snugness there not too bad that's good then we'll grab a spring and we'll mount the spring since we're right here spring also comes in the hardware kit and I find a, a pair of pliers just will help you get it mounted in just slide it in there. Top. All right. Since we're here, we might as well put the tracking wheel on. I've got the, the bolt and the spacers are included in the hardware kit. Slide that on spacer over it like this and it threads right up this doesn't have to be real tight i want the wheel to be able to spin 
uh, too much pressure. All right, so let's move on to the platen arm and setting that whole thing up. Uh, it's actually a lot easier than you might think. Uh, some people have, um, you know, thought it would be quite difficult to line everything up, but the easiest way to do this is to literally set the platen, the D plate, right on the tube itself and then just make your marks so that you can uh, drill your holes and and this is as simple as it gets um, the one thing you really want to pay attention to is that you do mark these correctly and drill these correctly because if you don't these are cut really quite perfectly here and there's not a lot of room for play if it's a 3 8 uh, bolt it's it's really tight in there so if this hole over here is off just a little bit it will uh, it will bind up on you so you really want to make sure that you get that as centered as possible uh, on there and and just double triple check it you know go go through it and and when you drill the hole and, and you put your maybe do one at a time kind of thing uh, you know this is fabrication so you don't have a lot of room for error in this but again it's it can be as simple or as complicated as you want so lay the d plate on the arm mark your holes drill your first one and then double check that you got your mark uh, proper on this other side before you drill this one and these are again 3 8 16 tapped all the way through so you're going to drill both of these all the way through and that's all you really have to do to the tooling arm I'm going to grab a shorty bolt, put it in there, just to make sure everything's lined up. And by doing it this way, what we've now done is we've created a situation where it would be really hard to sort of screw up this, this drill and tap. It's uh, important that we get this dead center on that hole. And I'm able to check it by just turning the drill bit in the hole and checking for my clearances. I look good and I'm gonna go ahead and drill it just like this. Beautiful, just the way we wanted it. Nothing's binding up, everything's good to go. And now you can see that does. So the next step is we gotta make our spacers for between here. We need about three quarters of an inch between the D plate and the platen arm. So this DXF file is uh, included in the plan set. Uh, as of right now, the filming of this, the, the plate is not included with the, with the actual grinder kit. So you'd have to make your own. I'm just gonna do two of them out of three eighths inch steel. So you can make this out of scrap if you don't have a plasma table. I'm assuming you don't have one, but in my case I do. So I'm not gonna cut them out but, uh, by hand, but they're easy enough to cut out by hand, so. Okay, so we've got our spacers here, and uh, these are just cleaned up a little bit with a grinder just to kind of straighten them out and all. It's really important they sit flat, and they sit flat up against here. You don't want any uh, variance uh, on the surfaces. You want them to sit nice and flat. Uh, we're going to take our D-plate here, our spacers, and in the hardware kit, you actually get uh, uh, some really nice nuts and bolts and, and knobs. So we're going to go ahead and thread that through. Our spacers through. While it's still loose, we're gonna thread in our knob. And take a washer and a lock washer, slide it over this side. 
finish it off the nut. All right, let's take a minute and talk about the platen bracket. So this is your D plate here and you need something to hold up the face of the platen. And you got a couple of options. You can get a piece of uh, two by two angle and you can cut this, uh, basically creating a notch uh, like, like here and here. And you cut that out. And then you, you cut all this out right here. Cut that out. And what that does is that gives you a good backer for the, the platen. Or you can use my uh, design, which is uh, I've cut out of quarter inch plate here and you get the DXF files for this. Uh, this is a platen bracket that I designed and everything lines up real nice. If you use this guy, you gotta use a couple of spacers between the D plate and it to kind of lift it up off the, off the face of the platen just slightly so it'll align with your belt. But if you go this route, uh, you get a chance to uh, get it all lined up right off the gate. So let's, Take a second here and I'll show you how it works. These pieces nest in here. You pop a weld on both of those on, in here and hold it up. And then you drill and tap a couple of quarter 20 holes and weld this up like this. And then you've got a really nice solid surface. In fact, you don't necessarily have to cover this in high carbon steel, uh, treated high carbon steel. It's not even necessary at that point because this is you know, good quarter inch thick steel. Uh, I prefer the, uh, the carbon steel because it won't uh, bend or it won't sort of um, round over on the corners like mild steel will. You'll get these corners right here that'll be rounded over. So I prefer high carbon steel in this application. Uh, I, at the moment, am not selling these pieces. I, I just don't have the facility to manufacture them. I have a plasma table, but I can't. I can't keep up with the, the demand for them. So at some point, I'll probably offer them. Um, otherwise, you can take the CAD files that are included in the plan set, and you can cut out your own. They're pretty easy to cut out on a bandsaw. All right, so we've got our brackets welded up here. We've got our holes drilled and tapped, quarter 20. And take these uh, quarter 20 half inch and thread them in. These are included in the hardware kit. What this is gonna do is it's gonna give us a spot for our bracket to line up to so we can pop a weld. All right, so we are at the stage where we've got the platen bracket all mounted to the, the D plate here. 
and we can start assembling the platen itself. It's exciting because we're getting so close to completion on this thing, at least to, uh, to do a test run where we can dial things in a little bit. So in order to mount this all up together, we need the spacer, uh, the, uh, the, the three and a quarter inch long bolt, uh, a few pieces of hardware that all comes in the hardware pack and uh, we'll get started here. It's, it's a pretty straightforward process. Everything's been kind of dry fitted anyway, so um, now this is just the, the fun stuff. So we're gonna take our, our bolt, slide it through here, and our spacer as well, and get it preliminarily threaded up on here, like that, get that started. Grab our knob, and the knob I like to do a wa uh, lock washer, and then another straight washer. Again, that's all included in the hardware pack. Actually, I gotta drive this in a little bit tighter here. Take our two inch platen wheels here and get them Mounted. Also don't want to forget the washer, lock washer, and the nut for this side. And if you uh, buy the hardware kit, you get all the pieces and parts to mount these wheels. Uh, and if you decide not to go with, with our kit, um, you, you know, you just want to make sure that you get the right sizes and in the plan set the sizing is in there So you'll you'll know what what works the best because if you get too long of bolts You know you're threading and stuff It won't quite thread up and it might not lock into place properly and You want to make sure when you tighten these down that you're doing it in such a way that there's no play in the bolt Whatsoever, but yet the wheel still spins freely Otherwise, if you tighten it too much, you'll get some binding in there and the wheel itself won't spin and it'll get hot, which you really don't want. So that's why we use lock nuts on this side, on the, on this, on the bolt, because that will keep it from loosening up with any vibration. All right, all that looks pretty good. So we have to add a uh, threaded hole here in the side for the, the work rest arm. And uh, some people have been using this, uh, this hole here in the motor plate. I have done that in the past. Uh, it just, you don't get threading all the way through the, the actual piece of plate. So uh, for extra rigidity, I like to just um, add it to the side here. And it's really just a, it's really just kind of an eyeball situation. Uh, I like to center it on the tube here and then drill my 5 16 inch hole and thread and tap it so I can add my knob. All right, so let's talk about the work rest real quick. This is the work rest uh, tooling arm. And then you've got a couple of pieces of tube that are gonna uh, fit onto this. Uh, this is for the uh, articulating work rest uh, base and this is gonna slide in and out of there. So this particular piece uh, is gonna get welded up to here, but before we can do that, we actually need to tap, drill and tap a hole in this. 
uh, to allow for another knob because there's a locking knob that goes on the outside of that. So uh, before you weld this up, drill that hole and, uh, and then we'll get set up to weld it together. All right, so uh, the hole for the threaded hole for the, the knob, not super important where it is. I mean, you, you, you wanna put a little bit of thought into this. You can obviously go read the plans and figure out exactly where you wanna put it. Um, I like to just go ahead and eyeball it. For me, that, that works out just fine. So in uh, this case, uh, where I've decided to put it is about an inch and three quarters down from the top. And what that does is it gives me a, 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 a nice comfortable way to turn this knob to lock down the work rest. So again, this is a 3 8 16 threaded uh, hole. So we're gonna drill it at 5 16 and tap it out 3 8 16. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we've got our hole drilled with our for a knob, and we need to uh, position this on the tool rest in such a way that where it's going to sit, so we can weld it up. The reason I like to do it uh, in in this on the grinder itself is because I like to double check for level on everything, uh, because <clears throat> ultimately where this sits level is how the table is going to sit level and uh, if you don't if you don't level it to the platen it'll you know it's not a huge deal but i my preference is to have everything uh, lined up as much as possible and you wouldn't believe it but you know when you when you use your digital level and you check everything it can be off quite a bit so uh, we're going to go ahead and just check it um, here and i like to just start up here 0 0.04 and then we're just going to check this and we're at 0 0.04 0 0.05 that's pretty good and we're going to check it this way and we're off by a tenth of a degree i'm totally okay with that i think that's good um i'm gonna just slightly move this over just to make sure it's centered on the the pipe itself so that everything is lined up Make sure that looks good and then we'll pop a couple tacks in it that way we can just make sure that everything is lined up uh, yeah, even after the tacks are in it and this this piece doesn't need a, a ton of uh, welds in it just a couple you don't want to get it super hot because you don't want it to warp Okay, so uh, this is all the stuff that we need to build the work rest. And um, this comes in the laser cut part pack. You get the work rest, you get the hinges, and the hardware comes with it. You do have to find a piece of uh, one inch dom or something similar. Um, and you'll see the reason why in a minute. Uh, the first thing we need to do with this guy is we need to drill and tap uh, 3 8 16 about uh, three quarters of an inch in on either side. And the reason why we're going to do that is we're going to use this to mount uh, these uh, plates here uh, are going to go up underneath and we need to be able to bolt these up to it so that's uh, step one so i've had a few people ask me about you know finding the center of something and uh, they want to get all very precise and and, and again i'm going to reiterate that <clears throat> this really is uh it just needs to be close doesn't have to be precise you can do this with a drill press um, i'm just having having to do it with my mill but uh <clears throat> you really just need something to, so that you can thread those bolts down into it and it's got a rounded surface on one side so when you go to tilt it you've got clearance dom was just the most simple thing i could come up with to um to to actually or this is just one inch stock uh, not dom but uh uh, one inch round stock was the easiest thing I could come up with uh, to make this happen and yeah you got to drill in and tap a little bit but it just is a simple way of doing it so don't overthink it uh, again this is an easy build it's not you know you're learning fabrication techniques while you're doing this and I I, uh, I built this grinder my first prototype having zero welding skills zero metal fabrication skills 
and everyone I build thereafter, it just get a little bit better at it. But don't overthink it. You know, just line everything up as best as you can, uh, drill it, and tap it. Okay, so now we've got the, uh, the hole drill and tap. We're just gonna uh, take the, our bolt and our plate and we just wanna make sure we've got enough threading in there to lock this down. There's gonna be a, a washer on this as well. So we're pretty close. I might go in just a little bit deeper with it. As you can see, it's just about halfway down the tap. So you don't even need to tap it all the way in. Just enough to get those threads in there. Sort of mop this whole thing up and that's that's essentially it. I mean other than the we, we need to uh, put in our threaded rod, but we can do that in a little bit. Line that all up. Okay, so I got all this laid out and popped some tacks into it. Uh, the uh, the configuration is laid out in the plans. You just want to pay really good attention to that. And you, I, I also like to take a little piece of leather or something and put it up underneath this pillar just to give it a little bit of rise off of the plate itself. If I if I do that, what I found is that it's easier for me to dial in the uh the zero degree and the 45 degree angle um, and that'll kind of make more sense when you get uh in the uh the uh, threaded rod installed and and you know you'll see exactly what i'm talking about because the the point of this articulating work rest is that it sits at zero and it sits at 45 and if you have this piece laying flat right up against this this uh the bottom of this plate what it does is it restricts that fine tuning and you can you can do that fine tuning while you've got the, the these pieces all in place. So uh, I know it sounds complicated. It'll make a lot more sense when you're actually seeing it. Also, um, when I when I've got it laid out like this, I can I can just really quickly kind of see how I'm going to mock this up. And at zero, which is where we're at right now. Um, I need to cut this piece of uh, threaded rod in half so I have one for either side. And then we're just going to use some nuts and we're going to fabricate. Um, we're going to lock this into place. But let's go cut this in half so that we can use uh, it on either side. All right, we have our threaded rod cut in half. And the, uh, the, the, the spot where you cut them in half, you'll probably want to weld that to the, the bar itself. Um, that way you're leaving the factory uh, threaded end on the outside. So for this, fairly simple. Uh, I like to thread on some um, nuts here. Slide it up through. And what these nuts are going to do is they're going to help us position everything kind of where it needs to go one on the inside one on the outside and if you've already if you already have this set at zero uh, you can basically just set it uh, there in the spot where it, it's all the way to the very top of the plate and that way you now know where you're sitting is right at zero. Um, the so every once you weld this threaded rod into place, every time you move and articulate this thing, 
uh, you'll know you're right at zero. That's, that's kind of the whole point of this thing is that if you've got this set up right and you've got it welded and tacked together correctly, uh, you shouldn't have to adjust it much. Uh, once it's on the table, you'll know you're at zero and 45. It takes a little finagling to make this happen right. So if you've never done something like this before, don't get discouraged, you know, just take your time and really, um, you know, really work at it to, to get it straight and get it right. Um, and in this case, I feel confident that I'm, I'm in the right place and I'm just gonna pop a quick tack right here and then we'll test it out. Lock it in place. And the other thing I want to mention is you should pop some additional welds on this thing. Um, but it doesn't require a ton, a uh, big long bead of a weld. And uh, I will reiterate that if you run a big long bead of a weld on both sides of this, you're gonna warp this plate. So just a couple of tacks uh, is fine in this, uh, you know, structural tacks, I should say. That way um, you don't warp the plate. And lastly, we're gonna throw a belt on it and tune it up. a little bit of an adjustment on the tracking. Well, there you have it guys, a fully built Revolution 2x72 belt grinder. And by the way, it did not take me a full week, would not take me a full week to build this thing if, uh, uh, if I wasn't filming it. So I wanted to kind of put that down and out there. But uh, yeah, filming things takes about 10 times as long. I think you could probably assemble one of these in about th two, three days, maybe first one or whatever. It, it's not gonna take you that long to actually assemble it. But uh, anyway, guys, if you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you click that little bell, you'll get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There are many ways to support my channel. There's Patreon, buy me a coffee. Uh, you can go to my website, housemade.us. You can buy the pieces, parts, and plans. If you're not in Europe and uh, the United States and you want to build the revolution, you can buy the parts or you can buy the plans, but not the parts. And I am currently looking for distributors in all other countries, Australia, China, India, um, pretty much everywhere. If, if, if you're wanting to set up a small business, uh, reach out to me, brian at housework.us, and we can discuss setting up a distributorship for the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder. As always, guys, it's been great hanging out with you in my workshop and studio. I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. Uh -huh.